Hello friends and welcome to my sketchbook tour which is not a video that I thought I'd be making anytime soon to be perfectly honest. This is the first sketchbook that I have fully completed and last year I finished my illustration degree. I've just been in a really bad place artistically to be quite honest. A lot of personal reasons just kind of zapping my creativity and just being just stuck in that horrible art block place and just not knowing how to get myself out, not knowing what to draw, not knowing even sort of how to draw it and I've always felt like my illustration has sort of been a big part of my identity and it's been really important for my mental health as well and to not have it to fall back on for so long made what I was going through even more difficult the fact that I just didn't have that outlet and that hobby anymore and I originally went and decided to study a degree because I hoped it would kind of help me get back into the swing of creating art obviously being a full-time art student it would allow me that time to develop my style to find out what I want to draw and all that kind of thing but it actually ended up having the opposite effect it was almost kind of restricting me in ways that I wasn't being restricted before so I started to think of my art in terms of you know I can only work in that style it has to be commercialized in this specific way for this specific market and the course itself was obviously more about just completing briefs as quickly as possible so I did fall into a lot of my comfort zones throughout my degree which wasn't actually helpful don't get me wrong I'm not slating my my degree I actually did get a lot out of it in terms of the business side of illustration and that kind of thing but I mean in terms of doing a degree like that to try and help your own artistic journey it isn't really like that and that's more of what I expected going in and it wasn't until I left university that I was actually able to complete my first sketchbook with all my own work and I'm just really really proud of it this sketchbook has been a real journey it's taken me a year to complete I started it last summer put up a couple of pages but then I properly got into like the swing of it probably in about October I want to say and then most of it is from that October up to July uh, 2019 so it took me a long time to complete it but I really love this sketchbook because it really tracks the journey that I've been on this past year and I really feel like I've found myself in this sketchbook I know that sounds really deep but I think the biggest hurdle for me and kind of why I wanted to make this video I'm not generally one for showing off my sketchbook I used to be and that was the issue I used to feel like I had to make a presentable sketchbook so a sketchbook had to be something to show off and I had to lose that mindset and that was what really helped me complete the sketchbook I know I know it like doesn't then make sense then make a sketchbook tour of it but a sketchbook tour isn't something that I necessarily like a pressure I put on myself I completed this sketchbook I'm proud of it and so now I'm happy to show it off but it wasn't in the back of my mind when I was actually creating it so it just helped me get over that hurdle. I do think it's almost kind of toxic in a way the online mindset that we kind of get ourselves into as illustrators and I think creatives in general not just artists where you feel like you have to share everything so nothing ends up being yours and you kind of forget how to create for yourself because you don't have a designated space everything has to be Instagram ready and I think that's a really toxic mindset to get into and it took me a while to just break that down and forget it all which is a big reason why my YouTube channel just got put on hold because I didn't want the pressure of it or anything and yeah I just felt like it's for me an important sketchbook to share because of that journey because obviously I was working in that mindset though and I wasn't planning on sharing it with anyone I do want to stress that this is literally all personal work there's a lot of rough work a lot of fan art just because that's what I like to draw for me and I kind of hate this mentality that like you're not allowed to draw certain things like I keep saying you you've got to draw for yourself it's what helped me get back on track and so yeah, there is a lot of personal work in here, but we're all friends here, it's okay. So this is the sketchbook I've been using. It's a Leuchtturm 1917, and this is actually quite an old sketchbook, as you'll see when I open it. I had it a couple of years before I actually begun using it properly. Before this one, I mean, I've used so many brands of sketchbook. I used to use moleskins quite a lot, but I could never really complete them. I don't necessarily recommend this brand. I did have some issues with it, 
but the reason that I actually started using it is because I had some issues with it so I felt that because I wasn't a huge fan of it I would be less precious about using it and potentially messing it up and it just allowed me that freedom that is a tip I would give if you have similar issues with me where you're struggling to complete a sketchbook is don't be too fussy about things like paper quality and stuff like that because if you're less concerned about the quality of the sketchbook you won't care so much about the art that you're putting into it and you won't feel this insane need to like reserve it for best or anything like that so you'll see as I go through my sketchbook that it's kind of a bit of a visual journal for me as well it's just how I like to work someone who I do have to credit on YouTube with just helping me get into my sketchbook practice again is a channel called the gothic Alice she has a playlist of all of her sketchbook tours and they hugely inspired me and still do whenever I'm stuck I go back and I watch her videos and to me she uses a sketchbook properly you know it's not this picturesque thing with finished art pieces on every single page it's something personal and journal like and I really have to credit her with helping me get out of my art block and just learn how to use a sketchbook again because watching her videos really really helped me so I kind of stick in just all random things um, these are just mostly from clothes and stuff and you can see I put the date that I actually officially started which is the 25th of July 2018. These few pages are stuck together and I put them together properly because I have no intention of ever opening them up so I'm not going to show them. There's nothing there it's just really bad art <laughs> from like years ago. Like I said I got this sketchbook and I didn't initially like it very much so I scribbled on a couple of the pages and never used it again and that was why I then started using it because I technically already wrecked it so like there was less pressure on myself if that makes sense so I pasted them together just so that I wouldn't have to look at them anymore because I don't like them that was me just kind of setting out my intentions with the sketchbook these are just things that I had from around that time I was just very much trying to get used to actually using a sketchbook again and I didn't quite know what I was doing with it at this point you can see this is this was something for my blog and this is just more journaly stuff this was something that I did on my iPad and one thing that I have kind of struggled with with my sketchbook a little bit is the fact that I like to use my iPad a lot and so it ends up kind of looking like I'm not I'm not doing art when I am it's just all on my iPad so something that I like to do just to kind of motivate myself and not look at a blank sketchbook is just to print things out and actually stick them in so like I drew that but it's digital so I that's the tangible version these are obviously some tickets from when I went to see Wicked you'll see Wicked is like a reoccurring theme um, you can see the stickers as well these two are by Holly Exley I should probably have done this at the beginning but those are from Holly Exley that's Decadent West on Etsy and this it's been on there for so long and it's got all horribly damaged but it's a sticker of Fiero you'll see the artwork in this sketchbook I do have them on my Etsy if you're interested this is just um, like I said there's a lot of fan art in this sketchbook just because it is for me this is from Anastasia the musical I really love the Broadway production so it's Dimitri and Anastasia and I was going to draw the music box but I obviously kind of lost interest in actually drawing the figures this is just some thumbnails that I did after I saw Wicked I like to just do that kind of thing I get really inspired after I go to the theatre and then I just do some thumbnails so I don't forget everything most of these are actually become artworks so this was the you can see the kind of workings and thumbnails there and this is the final artwork and then I digitalised it and these postcards are again available on my Etsy. This was really where I feel like I hit my stride, like I took a couple of months just to fill out these pages <laughs> and then I did this and I just felt like yes that's it, that's the style that I want to work in, it feels very me, because it's something that I want to do and so this was really just where I hit my stride with my work and felt really comfortable with it. This was actually to do the four elements and I was kind of thinking of Alphaba and Glinda's characters in terms of obviously the north, south, east and west but they they have corresponding elements so Alphaba is obviously the Wicked Witch of the West and the west is with Earth. It is actually flipped depending on whether you're northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere but for me in the northern hemisphere west is Earth and when I actually looked up the meaning of Earth it did fit her character well. It's all to do with being very solid in your beliefs and grounded and things like that which are obviously very much her character. And then I also have Glinda who is obviously the good witch of the north and the north is water so obviously her bubble <laughs> that alone is water and then I initially printed them out but they look really crap so I put my postcards when I got them printed up over the top 
after that I then, I mean I actually did this, it's labelled Fairytale Week, but I did Folktale Week. You can see that on my Instagram. I am actually thinking of making a zine out of all of those illustrations that came out of that and I just did some thumbnails. And then this was Fiero, obviously just completing the three main characters from Wicked. I really, really love how this one came out. I lost the whole elemental idea and I just kind of did it more straight up illustrative. Um, that's obviously Kaima Ko in the background and then the Scarecrow, because obviously if you've seen the musical, you know why the Scarecrow is relevant for Fiero. And the Sunflower Field as well. And then you've got the Blue Diamonds. And I really, really like how that one came out. And sort of like, I felt like I'd hit my stride with these, but then when I did this, it was, you know, I really felt like I was where I wanted to be with my work. Kind of, if I flip back as well, one of the things that I don't like about this sketchbook, it's not a mixed media sketchbook. It's very fussy about, like the watercolors go all kind of patchy, even Copics. I use a lot of Copics in my work and they don't work very well on this paper. So that is just something to be aware of. This one is gouache because that, that is just watercolour and it completely wrecked the page and I'd already drawn that on the back. So then I did that with gouache and that's why I didn't even bother colouring that one. Went to see Wicked again, like I said, a theme. I also went to see Le Mis and then I just drew the Time Dragon and it just made me think of these Sid Barrett lyrics from his song Octopus. I was also trying to just practice using a biro. I've been watching a lot of hot YouTubers just to obviously try and inspire me and stuff and I was watching Drawing With Waffles and she said how drawing in a biro, it really helped her art practice because obviously it's non-erasable. So that's something that I was just trying to explore. I tried to explore it here as well, which the film Big Sky and just sketch that while I was watching it. It's not great, but just some hand practicing as well. It's my thoughts on the film. More hands. Went to see Company. It was really good actually. It um, was the gender bent version they did in London. And then that became a digital piece, which I will put on the screen somewhere. And it's Karen Olivo in Moulin Rouge. I'm actually going to see that very soon. So I'm very, very excited. And so that's why I drew that, because I think it was around the time that I was buying my ticket. This was just practicing, like, <laughs> I think I was pretty much just trying to fill up the page. Next up is Hans and Elsa from Frozen. I was just kind of playing around trying to put them into my style. They're my two favourite characters from the film Frozen and I hadn't really drawn them before like properly and I was just seeing, like I say, what they look like. Alice in Wonderland, that's always just been my favourite novel. It's my favourite Disney film before Frozen was released and just practising drawing Alice in my style. I've always previously drawn her very Disneyfied, and I just wanted to see what she would look like. I'm not completely happy with it. These are things that they, I think they came on like some junk mail, but I liked them, so I cut them out and stuck them on. Oh, these are iPad sketches. That was originally that, so that's how it kind of translated into my digital style. This isn't in my sketchbook at all. It was a traditional sketch, but I drew it on like an A4 piece of paper, and it's obviously Elphaba and Fiero. That was an illustration of the Snow Queen. That one was drawn entirely on my iPad. I don't usually draw entirely on my iPad. I usually start as a traditional sketch just because it's how I like to work. But that was one where it was just completely started from scratch on my iPad. Um, obviously some tickets as well. This is January 2019. So this is at the start of the year that I was filling in some of these illustrations. I think I was actually having a bit of art block here, which is why so much of it is just stuff stuck in. And these are just some sketches. Most of them are like Disney characters, as you can probably tell. I've got an Elsa there, Anna and Kristoff. I'd never drawn Kristoff before, and I mostly just wanted to practice, and I just felt like drawing something cute. That's Rapunzel. I really like how the colors actually came out in that one. I definitely grew more comfortable with translating pre-existing characters into my own style, which is something I've always struggled with before. Like with Disney characters, before I've always been of the opinion that, you know, if it doesn't look like a copy of the original character, then why bother? And it was just very liberating to just draw them how I wanted to in my own style. Elspa and Hans again. Oh, that was when I went to see Dumbo and just some doodles. That's actually an ornament I've got of a clown that I really, really like. Um, these were just some random faces that I found on Pinterest and I was just you know, 
finding stuff to draw. I think that's another huge thing with this sketchbook that I didn't do before where I just looked up random reference images and tried to draw them and I think with this as well I was looking at like different ethnicities and things and that was when I went to see Us. Oh these are some sort of dress designs. I went to see Wicked, surprise surprise, and I was just thinking about kind of translating their costumes into sort of everyday wearable versions. I do sew but I don't know if I would ever actually get round to this but I was just thinking if you've seen Secret Honey Disney dresses I was kind of thinking of that kind of thing but for Wicked. Some of these like this obviously isn't mine. I think I've got a couple in some other places as well. I forget who they are. They're just pictures I've got off of Tumblr. I'm not trying to like claim all of this is my own or anything. These aren't mine. I don't like write down who it is either just because like I say this is my personal sketchbook for me so it's not something I intended to put out there. This is just more of the same. Just stuff from Tumblr. Most of it's stuff from Tumblr. Um, Wicked again. Elfbert and Fiero again. This also became a proper illustration. Illustration. It actually started like way back here. It's one of these thumbnails, I think. And then I finally got around to actually drawing it. This was, I was really pleased with this. This is Aaron DeVate. He's an Broadway actor and I was really proud of how this one came out. It's all biro and other than like way back at the beginning. It's one of the first biro drawings, ballpoint drawings that I did and I was just really, really proud of how that came out. I did another one of Sintino Fontana and then I was drawing pigs. I was trying to look at characters for Animal Farm. So this was supposed to be Napoleon and I was just looking at pigs. These are all from reference, just kind of getting used to drawing a pig. Um, that was the final thing. I do actually have a video on it. I don't know. This will probably be up first, so sneak peek. And this was just me practicing drawing Hans and I was literally like pausing the DVD and looking at how he was and just trying to translate it because I wasn't completely happy with how I was drawing him before. Again, that one isn't mine, something that I found online. This is drawn from an actual production photo. I actually did that when I was watching Eurovision. It was just something to pass the time. These are sketches, as that suggests, from the Natural History Museum. I was just trying more kind of on location stuff. This whole next few pages actually are from when I went down to London for MCM Expo. I went in an Elsa cosplay and so I just sketch Elsa. You can see that this started as like a green coral raise and then I went over the top of it with the biro. Another ticket from going to see Wicked and I went to see Come From Away. I do see other shows as well as Wicked and I decided to sort of extend my characters from before. Like at the beginning I've got Elphaba and Fiero and that so I just decided to extend it with other main characters that I can make it more of a proper series. So this is my drawing for Bok. I haven't actually finished the digital version of that yet but it is going to be digitalised. And then that's Nessa Rose. I'm not completely sure what her background's going to be yet. I have started that one on my iPad as well and then I thought I'd include Toto because in the original Wizard of Oz she's obviously trying to take Toto. It's not really brought up in Wicked, it's not in the book either, but I just thought I would kind of include that as more of a reference to the Wizard of Oz. I think I left that blank because I think I was intending to put like finished version of when it's completed on my iPad, I'm gonna stick it in there. And um, just some drawings of Elsa more Elsa and um, just some things I got through the post. Anna, oh yeah of course these are the uh, Frozen 2 costumes. That's um, Patty Mirin for Anna on Broadway as well and just a quote. That's the trouble with Copics, they kind of ruin the page behind so then you can't really use it and you've not really got much choice than other to stick a load of stuff on. More hands, I think at this point I knew I was getting towards the end of the sketchbook and I just wanted to fill it up. That was another picture from Pinterest. That was just a place that I visited. Really good if you're near it, if you're in North Yorkshire. This was actually a really old thumbnail that I had. I think it actually started out on my iPad and I have like a folder in Procreate where if I get inspired in like the middle of the night, I'll just quickly scribble something on my iPad and then I have like this whole folder in Procreate of just scribbly thumbnails. And this was one of them and it's just gonna be Return to Oz. I really love some of the imagery in Return to Oz and I just wanted to draw Mumby and all of her heads. I love the imagery. I really hate these cinema tickets because you can hardly see them after a while but that was for Toy Story 4. Glinda and Alphabet again obviously I realised that I, I'm in the process of like making some products for my Etsy shop and one of them is this one of Alphabet and Fiero that I'm gonna like cut them out of that background and just have that as a product and I realised that I wanted one for Alphabet and Glinda so 
that's that. Again, just sticking stuff in. This was from my birthday. That was when I went to see Midsummer. And that was when I finished it on the 15th of July. They were literally just to fill up the page. So that's my whole sketchbook. I've actually already started my second one. I've actually bought quite a few of this sketchbook because I think they've changed them. They've got two bookmarks now. So I have one of the newer ones, which I like even less than this. Like I say, because with this one, that the paper quality isn't that great and it all kind of warps and goes through and I have to be careful about what I'm putting on it. I like it because then I can trash it and not feel bad. So I decided to stick with this sketchbook, but I have changed them and you can tell by the bookmarks. The newer ones have two bookmarks. This older one has singular bookmark and I actually think the newer ones are even worse. So I have stocked up on some of the older ones that I found in local shops. So I have started my next sketchbook. I'm not gonna promise whether I'll give you a sketchbook tour of that one because like I say I think it's really important for a sketchbook to be for the artist and not to have that pressure of oh I'm gonna do a sketchbook tour at the end of it so I don't want to make any promises but I hope that you enjoyed looking through this one with me I know that this one is like far from perfect but that's what I like about sketchbook personally I think a sketchbook should be scribbly it should be messy it should be that peek into an artist's mind I think when it's all perfectly curated with finished artwork on every single page personally I find that a lot less interesting so hopefully you like looking through this as much as I enjoyed actually creating it and putting it all together like I say I'm really proud of this sketchbook and the fact that it's the first one I've finished in so long I just feel like it really shows my journey I mean like I say even the fact that you can tell that you know these were my first ballpoint drawings and then I went on to create that I mean you know yeah. I think that's, I personally feel like I've got a lot of work to be proud of in this sketchbook. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.